Hello, my name is Hans Lindetorp and I'm really excited about music production for interactive media. I'm happy to be a part of the Sound and Music Computing Conference 2021. And today I would like to present our latest study. It's called Audio Parameter Mapping Made Explicit Using Web Audio XML. It's written by me and my co-author Chetil Falkenberg. We are lecturers and researchers at the Royal College of Music and the Royal Institute of Technology in Stockholm, Sweden. Among our students, we found a group that are really talented in music. They sing, they play, they compose, they arrange, they produce music to commute to the wild world. That works great through services like Spotify, YouTube and so forth. But we've also learned that when it comes to interactive applications like computer games and virtual reality, they really struggle expressing themselves uh, through that medium. And that is um, one of the reasons is that they, are, they don't know any programming languages. So it's really hard for them and it becomes a barrier. Aiming to solve this challenge, we have created Web Audio XML that was presented at SMC 2020. Web Audio XML is an XML syntax that makes it possible for the creator to describe an audio applica application using standard XML syntax. And since the introduction last year, we've seen more than 40 student projects successfully result in interactive sound and music web applications. And we are presenting various aspects of these studies uh, at different conferences this year. Um, except for this one, uh, also the Web Audio Conference and the International Conference for Auditory Display. Working with the students, we've come to realize that there is a great potential to extend the language to describe really complicated mappings between variables and audio parameters. And I would like to present a demo for you to make it more clear. This is a multi-track recording with different instruments. And when we hit play, we can listen to it. There is a slider at the top, but the slider is not uh, moving across uh, time, but rather across different stages of the mixing settings, mixer settings. So when I move the slider from 0 to 10, you can hear how the high pass filter is decreasing its frequency, how the uh, clavinet is uh, fading out and the piano is fading in. Moving from 10 to 20, the Fender Rhodes fades in and towards 30, the shaker fades in. Between 30 and 40, the synth pad starts to fade out and the bass and drums are fading in. The synth pad keeps on fading out. And when we reach 50, the clavinet enters again. At 60, there is a sudden change in the bass and the drums. terms of intensity. And between 70 and 80 the hammered organ fades in. And finally a low pass filter is decreasing its frequency. This makes it possible to create really interesting applications where we can play with the intensity in a composition. This can of course be done with uh, various different technologies, but what we wanted this time was to find a syntax that could describe the logic between the slider and the different settings in uh, the app audio application. And to do that, we set out a few design goals. We want the syntax to integrate well into Web Audio XML. We wanted to stay true to XML elements and attributes. 
We want the mappings to be totally flexible and up to the creator to define. And we search for readability, both for the creators to easily understand what they were doing, but also for us as lecturers to easily assess what they've been doing. As an inspiration, we used three different metaphors. Uh, one was the meta knob, uh, often found on keyboards where one controller can be mapped to various different audio parameters. Uh, Excel, actually, uh, having the possibility to write short snippets of logic into cells. And of course, HTML with elements and attributes that defines objects and their behaviors. We gave ourselves three challenges or started off with use cases inspired from ideas from the students. The first one is called one to many. The idea was to have one incoming variable controlling two or more audio parameters. In this case, the relative X position of the pointer was mapped to the frequency of the oscillator and the frequency of a filter. When the fil uh, frequency here is double, uh, relating to the frequency of the oscillator, making it always become one octave above the frequency of the actual sound. The next uh, use case uh, is called many to one. So we have two or more variables that interact together to shape the sound. And in this case, we had uh, dear uh, x, which is direction on the x axis for the pointer and the relative x value again for the pointer. Those two together made it possible to, to map a gesture to uh, control the playback to use either a major or a minor scale, depending on the direction. The last use case is very similar to the demo you just heard, where one incoming variable is controlling the uh, mapping in a very flexible and complex way. We documented the whole process. We're using an annotated portfolio method to learn and getting insight from the process. And we performed three interviews with expert artists from the SMC field that was recorded. So what did we find? Well, first of all, all the challenges we set out were solved successfully. And we did a bench test. So the demo you just heard, after the recording of the tracks, it took only 15 minutes to define the different mixing stages and connect the slider to interpolate between them. The experts confirmed that the syntax were, was easy to read and understand. And uh, that made the mapping really explicit and easy for us to assess as lecturers. Finally, the uh, uh, experts thought that the style of the syntax probably is more attractive for web developers than for uh, traditional audio developers, because it looks more like, like web and HTML. And if you are interested in following us and uh, have a try, please read the article and you can download the open source code and you can also get in contact with us. Um, so take care and thank you for listening. Bye.